Okay, for our first demo, let's take a quick tour around Google Postman. As we said in the slides, Google Postman is a REST API client and it is uh, freely downloadable. There's no charge. Um, we also said in the slides that using a REST API was uh, pretty simple, kind of like using a, a web browser. So the, uh, there's sort of three components to the puzzle. The first is that we need to have a URL or a location that points to the object that we want to uh, manipulate, modify, or create. So if you look here, we can see that we've got that address here, and that is the address of my, uh, my APIC. Now, in this particular case, I'm actually going to do a login function to generate a session cookie that we can use uh, for future work with, uh, with Postman. So we've got the URL. Uh, we've got the command. The second thing is we want to say, do we want to get post or do something else? In this case, we want to post because we want to send data to APIC in the form of my login credentials, which brings us to the third part, which is in the body. Um, this is technically uh, JSON. So um, we've got this particularly J JSON formatted script that contains my username, admin, and my password that you can see here. Now, if I were to go ahead and click send, uh, you'll see that something happened down here at the bottom. I, first, I, I got a status code of OK200, okay uh, which is exactly what I want to see. And then we can see what the response was, and we can see the generation of a token or a web cookie down here at the bottom that says that I have successfully logged in. Where did I get that information? How did I know what the address was to the object, and how do I know what the payload is? Well, when you're first getting started with Google Postman, uh, if you search for the Cisco APIC REST API user guide, you'll actually find a lot of little code snippets that you can very easily copy and paste and then just modify the values to fit your own environment. So if I scroll down here and I go down to the JSON area, you can see this is exactly the, uh, uh, the, the, the location to the object, change out the IP, and then this would be the payload. So that's, it's, it's as simple as that, really. So one of the things that I like to do uh, as an easy example using Google Postman is um, I've got a, a brand new ACI fabric. It's, it's, uh, it's, it hasn't been configured at all. In fact, we haven't done fabric discovery. So one of the things we can do is we can manually uh, discover things in the fabric and right click and assign node names and node IDs, or we could be clever and use Google Postman uh, to do that as well. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm at the very first stage of, of bringing up my fabric discovery, but instead of doing it manually, I'll, I'll use Google Postman. So if we go to Postman, um, what I've done here is uh, in Postman, there's something called collections. And collections are kind of like bookmarks or uh, common tasks that you do over and over again that you don't want to have to keep sort of copying and pasting and you want to just be able to come back to it. So I created a, a collection here called Register Nodes. And that collection has two tasks in it. The first is log into APIC, which we've just done. But in case you haven't logged in or your session cookie is timed out, uh, you'll want to include that step. And then the second one is actually register my nodes. Uh, and as you can see, um, it's got a different payload that I copied and pasted from that APIC um, API starter guide. And basically all I did was copy this payload, change my serial numbers because that's required for fabric discovery, set up my leaf and spine names, and then my node IDs as well. Now, I'm also going to show you uh, something, um, you know, a little shortcut, I guess, a little helpful uh, tip when you're, when you're using uh, Google Postman. So if you remember from the earlier example, my URL and my body had actual values, that had actually hard-coded values. Well, what if I had multiple APICs that I wanted to log into, or I didn't want to hard-code anything? What you can actually do in, uh, in Postman is using a double curly bracket like you see here, replace the hard-coded information and declare a variable. So as you can see here, I've declared a variable called a pick, and then in the body, I've actually declared two more variables in double curly brackets, one called username, one called password. Well, where does the system find that? Where do I input that information? Well, in the upper right corner of Google Postman, they have something called environments. So if you click on the environment, I'm sorry, click on Manage Environments, you'll see that I created one called AMS-ACI. And if I click on it, you actually can see the variable names in the first column and the values for those variables in the second column. You can create multiple environments. So let's say you had you were working with 10 different customers or you had multiple lab environments in your, in your setup. You could create an environment for each of them and keep reusing the same uh, tasks and collections and just change your environment to, to point to the right one.
So I'm going to close that, and um, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a, a register node. So the first step is going to be log in, and the second one is actually register my nodes. Now, we, we've already logged in, so I, I, I should have a valid session cookie. So if I go ahead right now and click send, uh, my environment is set properly, I should be able to register all of my nodes with this information. And as you can see down in the bottom, I got a 200 OK. If we go back and we look at APIC, yeah, we can actually see that um, all of the, the nodes uh, have shown up as, as I wanted. Um, what's happening in the background now is the DHCP discovery of tunnel endpoints uh, is happening. IP addresses will get handed out. And in just like a minute or two, we'll actually have discovered the fabric. Now, of, of course, with only five devices in my small lab, it's not entirely uh, impressive. But imagine if you had a whole bunch of leaves, like maybe 200 leaves and a, and a handful of spines. Doing it manually could take you, you know, a couple of hours, and, and using a programmatic tool is, is clearly a faster way to get things done.